You're listening to WCAT Radio, your home for authentic Catholic programming. Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson on my show, Author to Author. I'm here with my very good friend, Dr. Rhonda Chervin. We worked together for many years at Holy Apostles College and Seminary, and we miss each other. So it's nice to have a Zoom interview. She's written a very interesting book, 77 Sound Bites of Love, The Philosophical Spirituality of Rhonda Chervin. So I'm really looking forward to this uh, interview, Rhonda, and seeing you. So um, would you like to start us with prayer? Yes. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Oh, dear Holy Spirit, I thank you for the gift of writing. And I thank you for the years and years in which I have written popular books for lay people, mostly popular books of spirituality about spirituality and daily life. And I ask you that during this interview, anyone who's listening may um, find an interest in reading my whole latest book, 77 Sound Bites of Love. And also possibly going on an interactive blog with me that we're planning um, as soon as this interview is finished. Good. Um, so this is uh, this is a lot of writing. <laughs> and how long did this take you? <laughs> well, um, a couple of months, maybe, because it's all excerpts from all my different books. Oh. So, so this is the thing. Um, I've written more than 80 books now, some wow. small, some large. But mm-hmm. about two years ago, I got the sense that I was too old to write any big, fat books anymore. Mm-hmm. And that I should stop writing. But I love to write. It's, um, it's philosophically speaking, it's part of my essence. It's not an accident. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so... I love to write, and so the thought occurred to me, oh, what I noticed I was doing instead of writing because I'm retired, I was just giving what I came to call sound bites to people who I met. So Mm -hmm. anyone I meet at the parish church where I'm living right now, Mm -hmm. anyone I met who I got talking to, I would just enunciate some truth out of one of these books. Mm -hmm. And I found that people really liked that. Instead of having to read a whole book, they could read the equivalent of a quarter of a page of a book. Mm-hmm. So I thought, and Sebastian Mahfoud, the publisher of On Route Books, loved the idea mm-hmm. that I could compile a book with just my favorite thoughts that I have in all the books that I've written with a excerpts from those books and then people who like it could get could relate to me on a blog and um, give responses to some of these kind of things so let me give you an example just to show Mm -hmm. you to see and you I would like Cynthia I would like you to respond as if you were a reader okay okay (laughs) okay so here's one about cats Ah, uh, <laughs> my favorites. Okay. I have a cat. Mm-hmm. And one day I was thinking of this. So this this is in one of my journal books. I have many journal books. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so I was thinking of this. How could the infinite God, infinite omnipot- omnipotent, omniscient God... How could he love us tiny little human creatures? And then I suddenly thought, well, there's an abyss between me and my cat. You know, Mm -hmm. a human and a cat, there's an abyss between us of our natures. But I have no trouble loving my cat. Right. See? Yeah, I like it. So this is like a little sound bite, see? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I magnif- put that together with a few more thoughts, and that's day 25 of the 77 days. 
is about my cat. Mm -hmm. So you, Cynthia, so when you hear this, you probably think of pets of yours or do, do oh, yeah. you like cats? I, oh, yeah. I, I only like cats. Um, I'm afraid of dogs. I would never hurt a dog. I've been involved in dog rescues, but I'm not a dog person. In fact, one of the there were two little dogs I rescued and they both bit me. <laughs> That's gratitude for you. But anyway, so um, I think like you, I am a cat person and I have a 12 pound Angora uh, Blue Point uh, cat, female. And that cat is my constant companion now that I work from home. So That's I understand. Yes. So the point is, uh, as I amplify that sound bite about the cat, mm -hmm. I think even though the cat scratches and bites me, she's not a nice little pussy cat. She's a pretty aggressive cat. Mm -hmm. Just the same. I have no trouble forgiving her, just as mm -hmm. God has no trouble forgiving us. Now, the cat doesn't actually repent, as it were, unless you think sitting on my bed in the middle of the night and purring until I get up to feed her breakfast at midnight oh. <laughs> is a form of repentance. <laughs> no, I, I, I think that's that. a point. <laughs> She's abusing you. <laughs> so you know, you, you get the idea. You get the idea how yes. um, a sound bite is a little image, a truth with a good image to it that people mm -hmm. can relate to easily. So here's another one: is mm -hmm. I have this terrible time as an 86 year old person. I have no pressure in my fingers anymore. So um, I can hardly open things. Yeah. So I get very upset trying to open things. Mm -hmm. So jaws, especially jaws or wine yeah. bottles, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Corkscrew, et cetera. I can't do, I think I can't do it. So mm -hmm. this is the sound bite. Yes. This priest once said to me, don't use say I can't, say I won't. Mm -hmm. We often say I can't about things that if we wanted enough to do them, we would be able, we would figure it out. But mm -hmm. the way it came to me as a sound bite was this. Whenever I can't do something, I ask myself this little question. If someone would offer me $500 to figure it out, would I figure it out? Yes. <laughs> so as soon as I think of this, I grab mm -hmm. the jar, I stick it under the hot water faucet, or mm -hmm. I lay it down and, you know, I figure out how to do it. Nine times out of ten, I can do it mm -hmm. once if I have that silly little thought, if someone gave me $500, wouldn't I give it? Now, of course, it would be more holy to say, instead of if someone gave me $500 to say, I could release souls from purgatory by forcing myself to try to open this job. But since I'm not that holy, this works for me. Okay, so then I have other ones which are much deeper and more beautiful. Mm -hmm. One that people seem to like the most is this one. I had this experience where... I was on a committee of U.S. bishops who were writing a pastoral on the concerns of women. Hmm. And they had, someone said, well, the bishops, they can't do this. They need to have women experts. So I was one of the experts, the woman philosopher on this committee. The others were theologians. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so then we had interviews with leaders, church, women church leaders. We had interviews to see what their concerns were. Mm -hmm. So this very famous woman theologian walked into the room with the five bishops and the five excerpts. And she sat down and she looked at the bishops with scorn. And she said, what has the church ever done for me? Oh, boy. And I spontaneously said, my father left when I was a girl. I think I was afraid there wouldn't be enough food to eat. I was an atheist. When I became a Catholic, there were thousands of men called father 
who laid down their lives so that I could have my celestial dinner. Wow. <laughs> and That's she, great. And she got tears in her eyes. Mm -hmm. She must have suddenly remembered that she used to believe that, see? Yeah. Well, this is this that little anecdote. Mm -hmm. People find very, very helpful to just an yeah. awareness of how it might be. Another similar type of thing was that um, um, left uh, left wing politicos think of the Catholic Church as being this exploitative place where the priest lives in this mansion. And he gouges the poor for money. See, like that, that's their image. And this is what I say from being in Catholic countries where the church is in the middle of the plaza. Yeah. I say this. People go in and out. The people go in and out all day. They don't see the church as belonging to the priest. We see it as our home. <laughs> And it's our celestial living room. Mm -hmm. And the priest is our servant. Mm -hmm. See, so it's a little soundbite, which I just say that and people immediately get it. Mm -hmm. See, they don't have to read a whole book of mine to get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's that's very interesting because I think, you know, what you managed to do with that... Uh, with that little sound bite is, is wake someone up and, um, you know, to reality as opposed to some kind of uh, political stance. Right. You know, so, yeah. That's well, good. I think that's, I think that's a big, you know that yourself as a convert yeah. from a Jewish background, yeah. that yeah. your own witness story reaches mm -hmm. people better than any, any tract you might write. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I realized that long ago that with great speakers, mm -hmm. I never remember their basic ideas. I only remember their stories. Mm -hmm. you know, that's why EWTN coming home is so terrific. You get all these stories yeah. of these people. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's more um, down to earth and more realistic when you hear it. Um, when you hear experience as opposed to, um, you know, I mean, theology or something, it's very difficult if someone has no background in theology to catch a point, you know, when you're giving it to them in, in abstract words. But when they, when they have a life situation that they can relate to, it gets the point across much better. Mm. Here's one that I had recently, I have that's in the book on day 26, but I always think of it, it's always in my mind. For me, um, I became a charismatic years after becoming a Catholic. I became a Catholic charismatic. Mm -hmm. And I love the joyful praise motif mm -hmm. at charismatic prayer meetings. Mm -hmm. But the soundbite is about this. Um, people say, well... You could have inner joy without lifting your hands and clapping and all this kind of outward stuff, right? You could have inner joy. And nonetheless, I find it disconcerting that here it's Pentecost Sunday and the readings are all about the tremendous joy. <laughs> and the people mm -hmm. look as if they're at a funeral. <laughs> they don't look joyful, <laughs> right? So... People say, well, they have inner joy. So then I say, oh, okay. So How do you have that on the inside need, only? <laughs> you don't need to express it. It's just inner. Well, do you mm -hmm. feel that way about people who say, if you, if you say to teens who are fooling around texting in the back of the church during mass, if you say to them, that's irreverent, would you like it if they said, well, I have inner reverence. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. Oh. I love it. Oh, that's so very good. The whole idea is to, the sound bites are thought provoking, see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's quite a contrast between between them. You know, so, you know, that that's great. They're texting probably friends or something and, and uh, you know, and 
it's like it is irreverent. <laughs> you know, so it, that that's a good point. Oh, well, yes. So anyway, so I have 77 of these mm -hmm. things, so I'll give you a few more. Uh, well, the one I picked out, the one that's the most difficult for people, and so I repeat it on several different shows probably, but it's worth repeating over and over again. I have this book, The Way of Love, which yep. I used to teach in philosophy of love at the seminary, but also in workshops all over in parishes and so on and so forth. And the book, The Way of Love, what it has is, oh, by the way, at the end of this um, sound bites, mm -hmm. there's a whole section with a little summary of what my best books are about, the ones mm -hmm. I consider the most best that people love the most. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the one everybody loves the most is not one of these that I've talked about today, but is um, the book originally was called Kiss from the Cross, A Saint for Every Kind of Suffering. And I wrote that book when my son committed suicide. Mm. I wanted to see how the saints got through the worst sufferings in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so I read all these saints to see how they got through different sufferings. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, and that book was so popular that when it went out of print, another publisher, Sophia of Institute Press, sure. took it up and turned it with the title. They made the title Avoiding Bitterness in Suffering with the Help of Our Heroes, the Saints. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good title because many, many people experience bitterness in their suffering. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so this book, The Way of Love, which is also very popular, mm -hmm. this book is a compilation of four little books of mine. The first one is What is Love? And then there's one called, based on my little ethics book, Living in Love. And mm -hmm. then there's one of Obstacles to Love. And the last part, which I do the most in parishes and things, is it's called a hundred day spiritual marathon where for week, each week has a theme. And for a hundred days, you try to become a more loving person. Mm -hmm. And the part that people love the best is I have a whole week where you thank God for everything. So you thank God, not just for the sunrise or your children or the mass, you thank God even for toilet paper, see? Mm -hmm. And that gets so, when you're actually thanking God for every single thing, instead of, you know, miserably muttering about everything you don't like about life, see? Mm -hmm. People say it's the best week they ever had in their lives when they were thankful that way. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the section that people like the most. But... The one that's most difficult for everyone is this. And in the time that remains, I'm going to try to force you, Cynthia, to give me an answer how you would respond to it is this. Okay. <laughs> this is the way it goes. Suppose you asked everyone in your family at work or the parish or wherever there are the people who really know you well. Mm -hmm. And ask them, tell me three things you like about me. And then tell me one defect you wish I would do better at. Mm -hmm. My experience is that if you do that, they all agree on your worst defect and you're surprised. Mm -hmm. So let me give you an example of how surprised I was. I asked that question of my husband, and he said this. It was totally surprising to me. And then everyone said I do it all the time. He said, because you're a teacher, every single thing we do in our family life, you rate as A plus, B minus, C plus, <laughs> not with the word A plus, but with a synonym. So you mm -hmm. say, oh, that was very good. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, that was so-so. 
He said, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so I asked everyone else that I knew whether I did that or not. And they all said, oh, yes, yes, yes. The other one was I asked my daughter who I was living with what I should give up for Lent. And I thought for sure she'd say anger because I have terrible problems with anger. And she didn't say that. She said, you're such a puddle glum. You're so pessimistic. Every single thing we plan, you come up with the five reasons why it isn't going to work. I hate it. Mm -hmm. So then I asked other people, I said, yeah, 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 you do that all the time. So wow. now, Cynthia, since you're mm -hmm. my uh, moderator here on this program, what would you say if someone asked you that question? What do you think your worst, what did you, what would you think? Okay, start with what would be three things people say they like about you? And what would be one thing they said that's probably your defect? Um, well, I guess that the uh, positive might be that at least I try to be kind. Um, not going to say I always succeed. Um, that I try very hard to be fair with people and just. And um, if something bad happens, I try to forgive. So, I mean, okay. note that I'm saying I try. And I really do try on all three. That doesn't yeah. mean I always succeed. But it's my goal to treat people the way I want to be treated. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then the, the negatives. The negatives are... If I find out that someone has said something about me, I become extremely paranoid, you know, something negative. And I think, gee, you know, is that a fault that I have that's gigantic and I've never seen it before or never heard about it before? And I mean, then I'll go around asking everybody, am I like that? Am I like that? <laughs> <laughs> I, and that leads to the other thing is that people get very tired of that. <laughs> oh, um, oh. Yeah. So you you exaggerate sort of catastrophically that mm -hmm. people are ag against you. No, not not necessarily against me, but that there's there's something that they see in me that I don't see, and I'm so surprised that it's so negative that it, it bothers me. Like uh, you know, um, so yeah, if somebody says something really negative about me, I get like kind of freaked out. Not. Not that I want everybody to love. I mean, obviously, we all want everyone to love us, and we want to love everyone. But if I hear something negative, um, the the other thing that I think is that I focus on justice more than love, and people have pointed that out. I mean, injustice drives me absolutely out of my mind. And mm -hmm. so I'll go on for an hour about how unjust something was as opposed to trying to look at it through the lens of love. Mm. Well, something positive about looking for justice, which I love, is um, mm -hmm. I think it was um, Paul, the, Pope Paul VI said, there's no peace without justice. That's right. Yep. I love that. I yep. love that. So the positive yeah. side of loving justice is that we try to act justly mm -hmm. in all circumstances. We don't mm -hmm. exploit people, mm -hmm. things like that. That's mm -hmm. the positive side. But the negative side is we can find it very hard to um, forgive, just accept yeah. people's different ways which are unjust. Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I realize just criticizing someone so strongly for yeah. something that's so small compared mm -hmm. to my things like being angry and screaming at people is certainly much worse than uh, coming late sometimes. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Yeah. 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 I understand what you're saying. And I think that's true because, because my love of justice, when I see injustice, I am, I am very, um, I wouldn't say I was nasty, but I'm, I'm forthright. And I'll say something like, what is up with you? You know, <laughs> no. oh, all right. uh, you now, know see, I can't is, let it go. Yeah. Now, this is the very kind of thing which you could have if you were doing the blog based on sound bites, which mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Sebastian Mafood is going to put up or say at the end of this video, how mm -hmm. you could get on this blog. So the thing is, you could be reading the sound bites, and whenever mm -hmm. you have a response, 
you would write the response. I would get a little email telling me there's a response on day 22. So mm -hmm. I go back to where the blog is on the En Route Books website. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. go back to the blog, see what you wrote, and then we mm -hmm. would go back and forth on it. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so you can see just from this little example with Dr. Cynthia Tulin Wilson, yeah. how interesting that would be to look at yourself as, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. yes, it's, so it could be a means of growth. It seems as if um, that's a good possibility. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that you have so much anger. I've known you. How long did we work together at Holy Apostles? It had to be like 10 years, wasn't it? About eight years. But the thing eight is years. this, that I don't get angry at colleagues particularly. Okay. I get angry or students because there I have some control and some mm -hmm. status. Mm -hmm. I get angry at family. I get angry at tech. Well, you could read all about this in my book, Taming the yeah. Lion Within, Five Steps from Anger to Peace. But I used to have, before I went into anger management, an anger management group, I used to have five fits of anger a day. Oh. And I went to about five a week. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> so it gets better. But um, mm -hmm. it's yeah, you. I'm, I've never seen you angry. I've never even seen you remotely <laughs> angry. Maybe you know? that's because you're so amiable, Cynthia. <laughs> I'm accused you know, of many things, but that's I'm not one of them. <laughs> the least, I'm the least angry in class because I'm mm -hmm. in control. I'm the yeah. boss. It's yeah. this feeling like I start thinking how I'm going to take revenge on the laptop for not working properly by throwing it into the bay, stuff like that. So that that's makes a little extreme and expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I should say so. I should say yes. so. In one of my anger management groups, there was a man who got so angry at the laptop that he took it out to the driveway and shot it with a gun. Oh, my. <laughs> that, that's just crazy. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I um, I don't really get angry very often. Um. I don't know, maybe I get really angry, maybe once every six months. But when I do, I'm I'm angry. But you know what it is? It's usually over injustice. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that the justice thing to me is absolutely wow. one of the most important concepts we have in our culture. And it is so often ignored. Oh, now you here's know. a wonderful soundbite about justice, which is some other author, and I can't remember her name. It's mm -hmm. a famous German woman writer. I think it's Ida Goris, G-O-R-R-E-S, who was a um, you know, World War II era great woman theologian. But in any case, this was a story. Mm -hmm. There was a Jewish in the novel, there's a Jewish convert who becomes a priest in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. And he's eventually assigned to the Vatican. And he's talking to this bishop mm -hmm. about his problems with injustices in the church. Mm -hmm. And the bishop comes out with this amazing soundbite-like line, which is mm -hmm. this. He says, in hell, there's justice. In heaven, there's mercy, and mm -hmm. on earth is the cross. Mm. Wow. Let me repeat it. In that's hell, an, there is incredible. justice. Mm -hmm. In heaven, there is mercy, and on earth is the cross. Isn't that a yep. splendid mm -hmm. line? You know, you could ponder mm -hmm. that line for hours and hours mm -hmm. in meditation, right? Yeah, as you could. As it, you could. Especially as it applies to your own life. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so... Um, we're going to end this session in a few minutes. Do you have something else you would like to say, Cynthia? Um, well, I could tell you how much I miss you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but Sebastian, Dr. Mahfoud loves us both. And mm -hmm. Author to Author is a terrific program, which I've been on many times. And now we go could you end with a prayer, Cynthia? Yes. Why don't we stay in our father together, Rhonda? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our, amen. Father, who art in heaven. Heaven. 
hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come. come. Thy Thy will will be done. On earth Earth as it is is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us us this day our daily daily bread. bread. And forgive forgive us us our trespasses. trespasses. As we forgive forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you all. God bless you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Rhonda. Hello, God's beloved. I'm Annabelle Mosley, author, professor of theology, and host of Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. I invite you to listen in and find inspiration along this sacred journey we're traveling together to make our lives a masterpiece and, with God's grace, become saints. Join me, Annabelle Mosley, for Then Sings My Soul and Destination Sainthood on WCAT Radio. God bless you. Remember, you're never alone. God is always with you. Thank you for listening to a production of WCAT Radio. Please join us in our mission of evangelization. And don't forget, love lifts up where knowledge takes flight.